Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ryan and I am so excited for you to be here today because I'm gonna be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart and that is photography, and more specifically, product photography. I have always been so captivated by product photography, and when it's done right, you will capture your audience's attention like that. I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this with only using a cell phone and Adobe Lightroom. So, if you're ready for it, let's get into it. Woo! I think one of the most appealing photographs or style of photography is the flat lay. I just love messing with things and tweaking things to make it look perfect, symmetrical, and I just love introducing different objects or backgrounds to make the photo look interesting. For this video, I am simply just going to use natural window light, got a flashlight, some Smith's beard balm, a knife, and of course, since I am photographing this for my Instagram, one of my wallets. So, nothing fancy just four items that I think would look really good together. One of the most important things though that you should really look out for is an interesting backdrop or a texture. For this example, I'm just gonna use one of the wooden side tables that I already have in this room. So I have my backdrop and now I just gotta think about what kind of light am I going to introduce into the scene. For me, I've got these three big windows that I have just in front of me right here that have these shutters or blinds on them that you can kind of open and close and you control the amount of light coming in by just simply opening or closing the flap. The closer your light source is, or the bigger your light source is to your objects, the softer the light will be. If you have really harsh sunlight coming in, you can quite easily hold up a white bed sheet in front of your window, and that will soften or diffuse the light quite substantially. The best day to shoot is on a cloudy day because the light is just diffused already from the clouds. We've got our table right next to our window. We've got our light coming in the way we like it. And now probably the most fun thing I love about flat lays is setting up the shot. I love having symmetry in my shots, so I am really, really picky about how I line things up. I like to have correct spacing between everything and on the borders of the photo as well. You're not gonna get it right the first time, so little tweaks, straightening out wallets or straightening out items to make them look good is always something that I'm doing. Also with objects that are kind of hard to lay flat, like my knife, I'll just put any little thing underneath it to make sure it doesn't roll or doesn't tilt on an angle that I don't want it. All right guys, we're almost there. All we have to do now is take our camera, open the photo program, take a couple photos and see what we got. One thing to remember is just leave a little bit of extra space around your photo so that in post we can crop it in the way we like it. All right, now that we shot our photos, we can take it into Lightroom and see what we can do with them. All right, let's begin. Let's open Lightroom. It'll load up. And then you can hit this little icon down here and this is just import your photos. We're gonna go to from camera roll cause that's where they are. And I'm gonna hit this one right here. I'm just gonna zoom in and see what's going on. This is the photo straight from the phone. And as you can see, to me, it looks a little flat. It doesn't look like it's got any character or personality to it. It's a nice shot. It's straight from the iPhone but I think we can do something better. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is Instagram likes uh, the four by five crop. So I'm just gonna crop my photo, just make sure it looks nice and symmetrical all over the place. There's the same amount of space here as here and on the sides. We can always change this later. I'm just gonna try and get it as good as I can here. And that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna go over to my presets tab. And depending on what presets you own or have bought or are looking to buy, the preset is a base color for your photo. And I purchased this preset pack a long time ago. It's the Archipelago Lucas Corinta pack and it's got a whole bunch of different presets here. One thing to remember with a preset is that it's not gonna make your photo look incredible right off the bat. You have to do a lot of work to it to make it a final version. If I hit different presets, you can see what they do, how it changes the photo. I think some of them look really cool, but they still look pretty flat to me. And so what I did is I created my own version of this preset and I just called it AA because uh, AA will come right to the top every time I come to my preset folder. I don't wanna be scrolling all the way down. So I went to AA, made my own preset. And as you can see, it's really drastically changed the photo already. If you zoom in, you can see that there's a lot more um, detail in the wallet because the shadows are raised the highlights are brought down a little bit. And so this is kind of my procedure or my process and how I treat photos. So to create this own little preset of mine, I based it off of this LKO 2 v 2 And so I'll just hit check mark. And then we're gonna tweak this around a little bit. We're gonna go over to light. I'm gonna come down to shadows. I'm just gonna raise the shadows all the way, just so you can see a lot more detail in the wallet. 
I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do with this. Maybe a little more contrast to make it look a little bit more poppy. And then maybe the highlights bring down a touch. So if you click and hold, you can see the before, and then you let go, you'll see the after. I think it looks pretty cool. We're just gonna raise the exposure a little bit. Now that we got this going on, um, I'm gonna play with a lot of light. So right now it's just a flat picture that it's really evenly lit, but I love to just mess around with gradients, whether they be um, you know straight gradients or circular gradients. Um, I'm gonna go to selective. I'm gonna go up to this button, plus. I'm gonna hit the radius or radial gradient, and I'm just gonna click and drag and hold it. And then you can actually pinch out to zoom out, and then you can kind of play around with how big you want this radius. And then this over here, this little, square with a circle in it, I'm gonna hit that and then it inverts the mask. The mask is that red thing. And now wherever you see there's red, that's where we're gonna transform the image. So I'm gonna go down to light here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. If I come to my exposure, I bring it way down, you can see what's happening. So you're creating this vignette effect that really makes your photo dramatic. That's kind of where I start. I don't go too crazy. If you go the other way, it makes it white around all the edges, but I don't go too crazy. I just wanna contour that light to make it look pretty dramatic. So if we start there, I think that's a really cool spot to, to end up with. We can tweak it around as well later. So if we hit check mark, this is the before and this is the after. It's already tweaked it quite a bit. Also, I'm gonna change the color temperature maybe just a little bit. I'll come to color temperature. I'll make it a little bit warmer, maybe some magenta in there. The before and after, it looks pretty cool. Again, it's all about tweaking. Bring my highlights down a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back to the selective tool. I'm gonna hit this plus and then I'm gonna use this gradient and I'm just gonna click and drag up right here. And again, wherever the red is, is where you're gonna be affecting the image. So I've just made that gradient kind of come up a little bit from the bottom and we're gonna contour that light again. So if we go to light, exposure, we can bring that down a little bit. I think that's looking really, really cool so far. Maybe even a little bit more. So we're just adding some depth to the photo. We're not making it look so flat. Some people love that flat look and that's great. I, I like to, to make it a little bit more depthy, contrasty, moody is the word I'm looking for. So hit yes and there's the before and the after and it's looking really good. So what we can do now is I can go under the color panel and then I can hit this mix and this little crosshair thing, I can click on it and I can change the hue, saturation, luminance of wherever I click and drag. So if I click on a part on the wallet um, and change the saturation, I'm gonna click saturation, click and drag. Whatever color that I clicked on the wallet, you see that little circle down there that's picking from that part, I can change the saturation of and it'll change the saturation in the whole image of that particular color. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and that looks really cool. Then I'm gonna hit luminance and maybe bring up the luminance of that color a little bit just to make the wallet pop a little bit. Now I'm just gonna click on that bullseye thing again and it looks really good. I think maybe it's a little bit too saturated. So I'm gonna go back, bring that saturation just a tad bit down. You don't wanna make your, your wallets not look what they look like in real life. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to hit this little bullseye again and hit done. And now if you see, the before and after, it looks completely different. It looks amazing. Another thing that I like to do is come down to effects and put a tiny vignette on there, a little bit more. Basically the whole point of this is to contour the light, to make it a little bit more interesting. Again, this looks super flat and if you're okay with that, perfect, awesome, that's totally fine. But if you add a little bit of saturation, a little bit of contouring with different gradients and radial gradients, you can make it look really cool. So this is ready to go for Instagram. And so what I like to do is I like to save this, export to camera roll. So I do one of a post of a four by five. And then the other thing I like to do is also make it a nine by 16 so I can put in my stories. And I think that looks pretty rad. Export a camera roll, and now we've got a nine by 16 and a four by five ready to put on Instagram. Well, what do you think? Was that helpful to you? Can you see yourself using this technique with the window and the flat lay photography? I know I use it quite often and I love it. I sometimes feel like I use it maybe too much, but I just love it. It's just so great. I hope you learned that you've got a camera at your disposal almost all the time. Every one of us has a cell phone for the most part. You can create some really cool photos by just using a cell phone, proper lighting, 
and an interesting background and interesting items to shoot. Guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. And I hope that you guys practice, practice, practice when it comes to photography. Not one of us will get it right. We're always gonna mess up, but the beautiful thing about digital photos is that you can take a billion of them and just keep practicing. Well, that's it from me, guys. God bless, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.